Okay. Uh, in theory, I am back up now. Um. I changed a couple settings. We'll see if this is any better. Okay. So. Yeah, we're getting the joysticks here in an order. So I think we might be able to just go, when we say get controller, right here, when we say get controller, we could just try doing uh, target joystick drop down dot value. Way better, smooth stream. Okay, cool. So I was, uh, I had somehow cheesed up the settings. Actually, the computer seems to be running a little better too, so I think it was struggling. Um, okay, so we're going to see actually if this is enough to do it. Um, okay, so now we're going to need to connect up these references. And this isn't going to work any faster because this is still strangely, unbelievably slow asset import junk going on. Okay, so we're going to go get our target joystick drop down. And uh, we need to pass that into... Where is it? Right here. This is going to screw up navigation, so I'm going to have to fix that. Uh, actually, let's, let's go fix that. So the navigation junk is down here right here and if j equals zero then the above id is zero i think what we could do is <clears throat> Think about this. <clears throat> the thing above us is if we have something, we grab that one. Otherwise, we're this. That's not what we want. I, well, what do we do on the down stuff? Okay, right here we fix it. So we could do this, where we could say if i equals equals zero above selector equals um, target joystick drop down. I think that will work. Let's find out. Okay, so. <clears throat> Now we need to turn this off and then run it. Okay, right now we have the PlayStation controller plugged in. The, uh, what is this, DualShock 4, I think? If we go to game settings, change control layout, it says, yeah, right now we are targeting the DualShock 4. And if I select this and slip to this, oh, okay, we're not reacting to changing this this one, but that's okay, so that, we gotta fix that. Let's go back here. See the DualShock is showing at the top of the list right now. Um, okay, cool. So now we need to actually respond to changes in that dropdown. So that's going to be um, mm, 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 mm. Okay, we're gonna do this in start. Do we have a start already? Nope, okay. So drop down target on scroll dot on value changed dot add listener. Uh, we can just do an anonymous miss one, I think. Where we go here and we say, uh, 
refresh target joystick, and then redraw the UI. Okay. Something like that. Oh, and this is the... This, this expects a integer, which is the selection. Okay. Mm, yeah, alright. Let's try that. Edgy Sprat, thanks for letting me know about the uh, stream quality issues. Appreciate it. It's actually probably been that way for a few streams then. Um, people probably often just assume it's the connection on their side. Um, but the fact that the audio was coming through smooth seems like it was a good hint. All right. So, game settings. Change control layout. Okay, we're currently remapping the Sony DualShock, but if I go up here and switch to this... Oh, it's not taking that change. Look at that. Why is that? Why is that? Oh, I believe it's because... I know why. It's, it's because in refresh target joystick, we are setting the selection, right? Uh, we're setting the selection based on following the game settings, but we don't want to do that. We actually want to do a thing where we say uh, bool <clears throat> um, set to game setting, which will be false by default. And we can say here, if we want to be setting to the game setting, we're actually going to do this part. Uh, like this. And then... Here. Okay. Then we can go find the places we call this. Because one is right here. So yeah, this would be... Not the case where we want to do it. Is this it? On show. First time on show, we want to go to the set joystick. Okay. All right, so I think that <laughs> it's going to get somewhere. Um, I'm going to have to double check my save and load code because I have code that actually saves and loads control your, your preferences for remapping. Hopefully it's actually going to apply it to the right uh, controller. Okay, so we go here to game settings, change control layout. Okay, currently we weren't, we're not targeting the dual shock, but if we set this... Ugh, what the heck? Uh, will you provide a beta branch to Steam? To, yes, I will. I already have a beta branch set up. Right now, the beta branch and the live... Um, uh, the live version, the default branch, are the same one. Uh, but yes, this these changes here I'm working on right now, I will put them into the beta branch, and typically what I would do is I would ask my players on Discord to pull down the beta version and give, you know, those that are willing to pull down the beta version and test it and let me know if I, I broke anything. And then after that, uh, push it to the default branch for everybody. Um, okay, so why isn't this... Why is it still... Oh, because we're like re... Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't actually want to do this. Okay, that's the thing. Um, add listener. <clears throat> we don't actually want to do this. This is what... This is refilling the options. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so we don't actually need this... Uh... Yeah. <clears throat> Or actually what we want is we want this to be true for here and then uh, what it would actually do here is otherwise <coughs> mm, no 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 okay it should do it this way this should be the way it always behaves okay so now let's go find the spot where the code's going to complain. Yeah, right here. Get rid of this. Fix that formatting. OK, 
Okay, and then we go down here and we say, no, actually, we always want to do this. This is the correct thing to do. Oh, hey, Builder Argus, how's it going? Thanks for dropping by. Um, how are you? Okay, get rid of that. Okay. Because really all we want to do is we want to redraw the UI. <clears throat> Which is what we've got set here. Okay. Okay, now let's try it. <laughs> Uh, doing all right? Okay, that's good to hear. Me too. Tonight is uh, Pro Gymnast Fixes and Updates Night. Um, and primarily, I'm kind of like slowly making headway towards kind of more fully supporting all the different input cases that players have. Um, and... Uh, thing in particular that I'm trying to fix right now. There we go. There we go. That's what we're expecting to see. So now let me add an Xbox controller into the mix here. Okay. There it is. Now that's interesting. I wasn't expecting to see that. Let's go back here. Go here. <clears throat> really? Let's let's test this some more. Let's take away the Xbox controller. Let's put back PlayStation controller. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So we have a problem, which is that I was making an assumption <clears throat> around the uh, around the order of the joysticks, and that is incorrect. So what we're going to need here is we're going to need this thing, selected controller ID. This needs to be uh, updated properly. Yeah, to handle all kinds of crazy input combinations is, is a is a life task indeed. Yeah, so basically if you have if you're like kind of a average player who has one controller plugged into their computer, uh the game works fine. <clears throat> um but they're but the re the input remapping screen currently kind of assumed you only had one controller connected. So in that case it would work and you could remap controls. But in the case where you had more than one controller connected, uh, the remap screen could be choosing to show you the mapping of some other different, like virtual controller, or like, you know, one of those, like, um, turn the keyboard into joy into joystick input um, emulation software or whatever, for example. <clears throat> and so if it was finding that one instead of your main connected controller, uh, the remap screen didn't work properly because it wasn't actually letting you remap the controller you had in your hand. It was trying to remap and looking for events on this other virtual controller or whatever. So I'm basically trying to shore that up here. Um, the good news is that I can test that pretty well here because I bought not too long ago one of these weird like 3D mouse things. really haven't been using it very much. I've been meaning to try to learn it. But the good news is, is that thing has like this weird driver that it comes with, which shows up as a virtual joystick. Probably so that you can use it to control things that weren't intended to be coded to work with it, but you could still kind of hack it by being a virtual joystick. Uh, which means I have the ability to test here <clears throat> what it's like having a strange virtual controller connected. If I didn't have this, that would make this testing way more like shooting in the dark. Um, so, okay. So here, here's the here's the thing though what we need is we need a way yeah I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep a little list around private list int maybe of M joystick IDs okay so that in theory what happens is right here when you select a different target joystick we will say that the what is my 
member variable called here. Selected controller ID equals joystick IDs of the new selection. Okay, now for that to work, we need to actually populate this, and that's going to happen in refresh target joystick. So here, what we're going to do, we're also going to clear this. And then as we're looping through here, when we add a joystick. Um, for me, the displayed mapping is axis 22, axis 8. Yeah, so, okay, so that's the case where it is an unrecognized controller. Um, I did improve, hopefully, the default mappings for uh, for unrecognized controllers. Um, but the mapping screen, you really would need it in order to play with an unrecognized controller because I can't provide um, a mapping that works out of the box, um, which is sort of unfortunate. But at least now all the buttons will be mapped to something when you plug it in first. Um, so that should be slightly better in this new patch. And actually, Edgy Sprat, if you're willing, I would love it if you could test the patch and let me know if I've improved it or not. You might need to delete uh, the mapping, like reset, to try doing the restore mapping and see what it looks like. So you can see what it would be like if you had launched the game before you had maybe mapped it yourself. <clears throat> um, okay, so joystick IDs dot add, and we're going to add input player dot controllers dot joystick count uh, dot joysticks uh, uh, i dot id so that's what we want we want the actual joystick id okay so what this is what we're doing here is we're we clear the drop down of available joysticks <clears throat> we loop through all the connected joysticks we add their name to a list so we can show it in the drop down <coughs> excuse me and then now we're remembering the actual rewired ID for that joystick. So that, uh, and this right here is, that's okay, because that's just saying which one do we set as the selection here. Um, but we would also want to do this right here where we say selected controller ID equals input player dot controllers dot joysticks subscript I dot ID. Okay, and I think, so then now what will happen is when, if you uh, change the, if you change the drop down, we can go find out what the controller is we're talking about now by looking up its ID here. Um, and then we can call redraw UI because redraw UI for each row ends up calling, uh, ends up calling get controller and get controller we'll be using our selected controller ID okay good thing I actually talked this through because I had that pointing to the wrong thing okay let's test this now <clears throat> the kind of stuff that uh, you know thankfully you won't you don't have to worry about too much when you're building for a console because you don't have to support so many different cases but then again you have all the consoles um, official tests and checks you have to s handle which are equally tricky and complicated so you know all right so if we go here now we're currently targeting the DualShock 4 if I switch to this one we see we've got this weird no map scenario if I go back to this we have mapping Okay, that's good. If I take this out, it says, oh, all we've got is that weird controller. If I go like this, plug in the uh, Xbox One controller and switch to it, we've got mappings back. Okay, and there are the correct ones. So now we should be able to, uh, even though this X input gamepad is showing up second in the list, which means in the past, this screen would have tried to set up mappings for this, we can now properly map this. So let's test it. Now we should be able to, for example, remap the reset button to X or pull in arms to, <clears throat> um, I don't know, like, uh, mm, the left stick button 
and pull in legs to the right stick button and then tight grip went away so I don't know we'll add that to d-pad left <clears throat> we go like this and we say we want to just get input from the AX input and we can test the controls and now these would be weird controls I just invented here but if I click down the left stick hey look at that we can pull in the arm so I click down the right stick I can pull in the legs and otherwise everything else is the same except that reset is now on X instead of B sweet and we can quit out of here okay now let's go back and look at this so this should still be this way right so now if we turn this off now the question is is it actually going to save and load this properly so let's go back into the game and see if these settings are restored so if we go here okay remember that we only wanted input from the x input and if we go here Ooh. What's the deal there? Hmm. Yeah, and look at this. We have some weird junk here. So I have a feeling my save and load thing is exhibiting the same problem. Um, let's go remember how that works. I think that's down here somewhere. Restore defaults. Control map serialization. Save control map. Let's go look at this. So save control map. It has one entry for the keyboard and one entry for the gamepad. So this is probably the problem. Is that I guess we should technically be storing entries for the different controller types we've seen. <clears throat> and then probably on the other side here, on the load side, we're just calling get controller, go to implementation. Yeah. Okay. So we have to fix this too. Um, okay. So what we need actually here is we need this, we need multiple controller. Uh, so we can't just have a single one for gamepad. Uh, we have to have gamepad and then um okay this might be a little tricky um so then get controller map that part's okay but get controller we need to actually pass into this int id so that we can pass along and get the correct one there okay uh, int id id okay alright so then actually the way this is going to work is that game pads this is going to have to be a dictionary yeah 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 this has to be a dictionary Okay, so let's not worry too much about loading right now. We'll do it like this. Okay. Uh, so this would be zero. We're going to just like get rid of this for a second. Um, and we're going to get rid of this for a second. So we're not going to be loading maps. We can, ha we can handle keyboard still, but not gamepad. But let's fix the saving side. So we can't do this though where we just pass it one thing. Um, yeah. I guess what we'll need to do Uh, do we just keep these around in memory? I guess that could be okay. Or I guess, yeah. Hmm. Right. So what we would need here, yeah. Hmm. I don't like the way I'm about to do this, but 
So we could just have a pirate string uh, keyboard map uh, data. And then we could have private dictionary where the key is an integer and the value is a string. And this is joystick map data. Okay. So we could try it like this. <clears throat> so then the way this will work. What's the problem here? Right, everything has to be static. Okay. Because this is a static class. All right. Okay. Um, how do you keep track of the code and find your rant so quickly? Sure, you wrote it, but I don't see many comments. Which is, <laughs> mm. you're right. There are not a, not a ton of comments. Um, I don't know if I have a satisfying answer to that question, other than that you know, I tend to. I guess I've gotten pretty good at um, you know, following the chain of code. Um. Um, I guess is the simple answer. So the way this worked before is we never actually kept anything in memory. This class was pretty simple. It was just like, hey, I've currently got some mappings, throw them to disk. And then at some point, other, word, other, well, other in the code, you could say, hey, load controller mappings. And it was pretty dumb. It was like, I can go find two strings. One that's the mappings um, in a format that rewired likes for the keyboard and one that's for the joystick. And then it would just apply that to joystick zero if joystick zero existed, which is bad because like we've noticed here, that order can change depending on things getting removed or added and whatnot. Uh, and so that <clears throat> needs to be smarter. So I'm gonna change it now where I can keep around the data, which is a little wasteful from a memory point of view, uh, but it's gonna essentially mean that I don't need to refactor as much basically. So we're only gonna keep around one keyboard one, but now we're gonna have a dictionary that says, hey, what's the joystick ID? Now even that probably isn't very smart. I should probably be keying this with like a, like the hardware GUID or whatever on rewired side. Cause they, if I use just the ID, that might still be coming in the wrong order on subsequent load. But either way, we have, either way, we have an, int let's go actually look at this real quick. So where, where else do I do this? Um, dot ID. Um, like, where we, where's where we were looking at the joysticks right here? Let's look at this input player dot controllers dot joysticks. I and what do we have? We have identifier. Gets identifying information about the controller. Okay, controller ID is the session. This should be set to negative one, but it could be blah, blah, blah. Controller device instance, oop, GUID. Get this value from controller device instance. Use this to target a specific consistent, persistent device across sessions. So this is what I should be using. What is this? It's a system.guid. Okay, so that's probably actually what my key should be. Um, which means uh, there's going to be some code that's a little stupid to sort of map these things back and forth. But this is what we should be doing. I hope I can use this like this. Uh, and I might need to be turning these to strings and back. I don't know. Yeah, look at this. This is kind of... Kind of I mean, it has a two-string. I'm not so sure that the uh, JSON library is going to like that very well. So maybe we... Is there a parse on this? Try parse. There is. Okay. So I guess we're going to probably actually... Actually here, this could be system.guid. Um, it might just, we might have to turn it into a string when we serialize and deserialize. Okay, so the way this is going to work then is that when we save the control map, this has to get smarter now. So we're going to make a, a dictionary of strings to strings. And this is joystick maps. Okay. Then we're going to do for each uh, key value pair of system.guid. 
to string uh, kvp in joystick joystick map datas and then we say joystick maps uh, kvp dot key dot to string equals kvp dot value okay so that's going to turn that into something uh, and then we'll say map dictionary key joystick key joy oh. but I had key joysticks did I not it should be up here Oh, key gamepad. Okay, fine. Key gamepads is what we want, though. Okay. So, when we're saving it out, we're going to save that. So, what this will be is that the JSON now is going to have just an entry for the keyboard. And then it'll have an entry for gamepads, which is actually going to be a dictionary. And the key to the dictionary will be the GUI, the GUID, the global unique ID of the joystick type. And then its mappings. Okay. And then what we can do here is we can say, so save control map. This actually, what we, what we need is this should be empty now. Okay. Because we're actually going to be passing in, this is going to be a keyboard map data. And this is joystick map data. And then we just need ways to set this. So it'll be like public static void set keyboard and save. And we just have a string which is keyboard, keyboard add keyboard data. And so we'll set keyboard map data equals the thing we passed in. And then we say save control map. Okay. And then we'll have another one that's like public static vo ugh, public static void set um, joystick and save and then we'll have a system.guid which is the joystick guid and then a string which is the joystick map data and then what we do here is we say joystick map data's joystick guid equals this information and then we say save the control map please okay all right this should be close enough now what will happen is we go over here and we're going to have a compiler error somewhere where it's trying to save things right here so when an input map changes we grab the keyboard and then we grab the gamepad data and we're trying to save it but now what we need to do is we need to Mm. We need to do uh, system.guid joystick GUID. We have to get this somehow. Uh, I want to use track Can you briefly explain why you need the order you were talking about? Um, doesn't the controller manager do that based on controller information? Um, the order... Uh, um, I mean, I'm happy to explain, but I gotta try to remember which part I was talking about. Um, I'll uh, let me see if when I talk it through here of what how this is now set up one more time, if it uh, makes sense. Otherwise, you can maybe um, help guide me to the specific question. Um, so we're going to need to get this somehow, and then gamepad data is going to be get controller map. And this is going to take in. Well, actually, it already does it from the thing. So we just need to be like, uh, we need a function called get controller GUID. And we'll say get joystick. Like that. Yeah, I think. Um, do we know in this structure here? Uh, 
we know like what controller it was for or controller map player ID source map hardware controller type here we go so we could say like if controller type equals equals what's the type on this just controller type dot keyboard so if this was mapping a keyboard thing then we're just going to do this and they would say control map serialization dot say uh, set keyboard and save okay and then else if data dot action element map dot controller map dot controller type equals equals controller type dot joystick which is the only other reasonable one but let's be safe about it um, then we're going to try and get the current joystick ID get the map and then we're going to say instead here we're going to say save jo set joystick and save and we'll pass along the joystick GUID and the gamepad data okay okay so we're going to need this function let's go find this one which is up here and let's add private system dot GUID get joystick GUID and the way this is gonna work is we're gonna be like player dot controllers dot joystick count so it'll be like if player controllers dot joystick count is greater than zero then for each uh, player dot control for each um, joystick J in player dot controllers dot joysticks if J dot uh, controller was ID if ID um, equals equals selected controller ID then we're gonna return J dot uh, J dot hardware type GUID I think right yeah or is it this yes this one oh or we could use this hardware identifier maybe we should be using that that way we can use a string all the way around I like that so we'll do that and then um, if we make it down to here, we return none. Okay. So let's go find where we're doing this. So now this can just be a string. Okay. And then this function we just wrote. Uh, right here can just be taking in a string which means up here this can just be a string which is going to mean that we don't have to do that weird code I wrote a second ago to translate the dictionary types which is right here we shouldn't even need to do this we should be able to just say this equals joystick map data okay so yeah so basically like um, I'm having to map a few things around which is kind of confusing and the reason is that um, if we look at the function where we here so what we do is, okay, the screen, we, you need to be able to say which joystick you're trying to remap. So I need a UI where it allows you to select a joystick from the list. And so the way I get, the way I do that is I go through and I say, okay, hey, hey, uh, input player, which is the input system I'm using, it's called Rewired. Get, if you have more than one joystick, let's loop through all the joysticks and uh, get the name of that joystick and add it into a list so that my drop down can have them. So this is the order of this list 
is just whatever order the joysticks happen to be in this array. Um, in this array, excuse me. And so that order can change. So like when you, if you, if I have like my virtual joystick and my Xbox controller plugged in and I launch the game, the Xbox controller might be zero and the virtual one might be one. But then mid game, something happens. I unplug the Xbox controller. Now the uh, virtual one becomes zero. I replug in the Xbox controller. It's now one. So the or the the index in that list is unreliable. I can't use it outside of just the moment here where I'm showing you this screen. Um, it's also why whenever I get an event, which I, I forget where I put it, but um, when I get an event from the input system that a controller has been connected or disconnected, I need to refresh the UI and rebuild that dropdown list because it might have changed. So that's step one is that um, but in a few places in the code, we can use that number to to do things. Um, but it's not very reliable. So then what I ended up creating was, and this is kind of certainly not the cleanest way to do this, but I ended up somewhere to, up here defining right here, just a list of integers that says, um, what this list says is it's in the order of the dropdown and the values in each slot are the like unchanging identifier for that joystick, um, which is something that the rewired system provides. So this is my way of getting back from the, which, which one are you in the UI to an ID that's actually like not changing. So that it will always be the same for the Xbox controller, whether it was first in the list or second in the list. Um, and then I end up using that. <laughs> uh, so you can see right here, when the, the dropdown changes, when the user selects something different from the dropdown, I get passed in this callback, which item in the visual list was selected, zero, one, two. And I use that to look up the actual ID of the joystick that that represents and store it in this variable. So that here, when I try to actually get the data about this controller, I can say which controller I'm looking for. And this is the number that this method is expecting. It's expecting this controller ID number. Um, and also here later when I need to get like the name of this controller to save out the mapping, I can look up by looping through all the controllers and looking for the one that's the that matches this and say, okay, what what's, what's this thing called? I need to like store out some junk. Um, so that's the basic idea. Um, I think we're ready to test now. So what we're going to be doing is uh, I'm going to need to open up here and go to uh, what is it like uh, app data local low Oliver pro gymnast and somewhere here right is where the uh, controller mapping gets saved I believe um, it might be in save data control.map there it is okay so I'm going to delete the old control.map because I actually don't know although we're going to need to test what happens if you mm. oh no it's going to be okay it's going to be okay I renamed let me just <laughs> describe what went through my brain just now so the this class which is responsible for saving control mappings to disk and loading them from disk uh, is a, creates a JSON file and the JSON file, actually, can I, maybe I can restore this thing that I just deleted and you can see what, uh, what I was talking about. Yeah, so let's restore this file. Let's go look at the file as is right now. Uh, let's see, if maybe I can just open it here. Uh, hang on. No, I want to use, uh, I want to open it with uh, this. Okay, here we go. So it's pretty messy looking, but you can see that it's a JSON file and has a key called keyboard and then a ton of XML, which is how rewired um, outputs the mapping. And then, um, did I have a joystick one here somewhere? I probably did. There's a search for game pad. Oh, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right here after that whole big pile of code saying here's what the keyboard mapping is there was an entry called gamepad just one 
and it was saying like okay here it is here's the mapping for uh the one gamepad we supported and i was thinking to myself oh oh if i make this change where suddenly now um i'm not expecting a string under the name gamepad i'm expecting a dictionary um that when the new when the new code runs and it tries to load a control mapping it has this old format sitting on disk from all existing players it might freak out because it's not in the format it's expecting uh, but luckily because i renamed from gamepad here to gamepad z um, when it goes to try and load this if it ha finds an old file it's not going to be looking for a key called gamepad it's going to be looking for a key called gamepads so we should be able to sort of um, not fail on load um, so that's good otherwise I'd have to introduce like versioning or some kind of try catch block or something to try and handle the case where you're trying to load the wrong file version um, alright so now let's try okay we're running here so let's go to game settings okay change control layout this is the layout for the x input gamepad and we're gonna you know just change the reset to x okay so now if i pop back over here uh, this file should have changed it did so you can see here that we have no keyboard mapping um, which makes sense because I haven't fixed the loading side, I think. And then in game pads, we now have an, a, a dictionary and we have this thing called Windows X input gamepad gamepad and a value for it. Now, in theory, I could go here, switch to this and like maybe make this work. I don't know. Probably not. Um, actually probably not. Let's make a keyboard one though. Let's change this to Q and change this to F. So we flip them. Now we go look at this. We should see that we have a keyboard map, which we do. And we have in game pads, we have just one game pad looks like. Yeah. Now let me try plugging in the PlayStation controller at the same time. Might as well. Okay, we might as well, you know, try to fully test this. Okay, so I don't love how that said no connection there. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Let's leave and come back in. Can we? Oh. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So if we go here and say our active is the DualShock. Now, if I go to change control layout, hmm, why does it say no connection? It definitely sees that these are connected. Thank you, that made sense. Uh, just from my understanding, doesn't Rewired have fixed or self-defined layout schemes? Is it not possible to match the identifier and access the scheme no matter what the internal owners are to confuse? Yeah, yes, it does. Um, it does, and actually Rewired is essentially already doing that for you by detecting the connected controller and then loading the appropriate map that you've set ahead of time. Uh, this is just me trying to make sure I'm handling the case where if you've overridden that with custom mappings. Uh, and it's, it's definitely possible that I'm kind of do going about this the hard way because I'm not realizing that there is a simpler way where I could be uh, using the API that Rewired provides. I'm definitely a little worried about this no connection thing though. Why is that happening? It only happens in the case where we've like unplugged a controller and then plugged one in, right? Because if I have these two connected like this and I launch the game, I don't think we're gonna see this problem, right? We go here to game settings, we go to change control layout. Oh no, maybe we still have it, let's see. Yeah, okay. So we got a bug here. Interesting. Oh, if I hit restore though, things wake up. 
So this may be because I'm still... Didn't we disable the save and load stuff? Let's go look at this. Uh, no, this. Load control map. Hmm. Uh, we're clearing them out. That's why. Okay, so this loading needs to properly work. Um, let's look at this. Layout ID. Controller type. We can pass in the controller type. We probably actually want to do that. Yeah. So what we would do here is we would say... Uh, like, if... keyboard data is is you know not an empty string then we do these two things and we only want to clear out uh, we want the one here where we can pass in a controller type here we go controller type uh, keyboard comma category name yeah it's like that um, and then gamepad data we're gonna have to handle differently okay but that makes sense why that was breaking so I guess let's try and actually deserialize this properly now so gamepad data it's not just a string it is a dictionary of strings to strings this is gamepad data okay and then we can say, okay, if root key contains key gamepad z, <laughs> then gamepad data equals root key gamepad z as dictionary of type string to string, which I believe that will work. And then what we can do is down here, instead of saying if it's non-null, we would say if gamepad data dot count is greater than zero. Then we're going to p.controllers.maps.clearmaps in category up for controller type joystick. I, oh, I, think I need that to be a capital controller type looks like. Controller type dot joystick input category and true. Okay and then we have to do a for each uh, key value pair string string kvp in uh, gamepad data no 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 gamepad data okay and then what we need to do here is we need to add the map Right, we need to get the controller. So we have to do this. We go here. Um, and we say get controller. And this thing wants an ID. So this will be... And I wonder if there's a helper function for this. Uh, that, uh, player dot controllers dot like get uh, get controller with tag with template last active controller what if we say get controller can we pass in like controller ID controller type controller ID that doesn't help us um, okay there's probably a way to do this uh, but we'll do it the simple way so we'll say if player.controllers.joystick count is greater than zero then we do a for each joystick in player.controllers.joysticks and we say if oh, for each joystick j 
And if you say if j dot uh, hardware identifier equals equals kvp dot key, then we know this is the one we want. And then we can nest this stuff into here uh, because this is now going to be j.id. And then once we have that, we can pass this in, and this is going to be kvp.value. Okay. Okay, so that got a little deep on the if statements there. This should work. So the way this works is we loaded our JSON. Right here we said, does this JSON have a key called game pads or whatever this uh, static string is? If so, load that and expect that it is of a type of dictionary of keys of strings and values of strings. Then, if we got any content in that dictionary, then we're going to clear out any controller mappings. which may not be super smart, now that I think about it. What other options do we have for this? Controller type, category name. What, what, what options do we have here? Let's go back here. Category ID, category name, layout ID. Uh, no. No. Controller type category ID. Controller type category name. Layout ID. So I'm thinking now that there could be a scenario here where you've played the game. You made a custom mapping for a PlayStation controller. You close the game. You unplug your PlayStation controller, you plug in Xbox controller. You launch the game. We try to load your mappings. We make it to here and we realize we have mappings. So we tell the game, forget all the mappings that currently exist for the game, which means the cool default mapping it found for the Xbox controller will be thrown away. And then though, we're only ever going to end up loading maps for other controllers, ones that aren't the one you wanted. So it's almost like I don't want to clear all the maps. I want to just replace the one for the controller in question here. So I wonder p.controllers.maps, what else can we do here? Um, get first map. Load default maps. Hmm. Loads up map. Is there a set map? Or like Add map from JSON, add map from XML, which is kind of what we're doing already. Oops, 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 let's go look at the bottom of this. Set maps enabled, set maps enabled. Hmm. Remove map. Remove map. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to not clear all. Didn't you already have the identifier name of the controller as a string? So it should be possible to save different custom mappings. Yeah. Yep. And now I'm just making sure I handle the case where I don't accidentally del remove a map that shouldn't have been. So we can say here we want to manually actually remove the map for this specific controller, which is j.id. And we're going to give it the category name, I assume. Yeah, so category, what did I call it here? Input category. Category. And then input layout. Okay, so this should, this should be better. 
All right, did I get this right? We want the one where you pass in the integer, which is the controller ID. And then you pass it in the string of the category and the layout, yeah. So why isn't it like this? Why we got the squigglies? Hmm, let's go look. I wasn't getting a helpful error message there in VS Code. Okay, cannot confirm. Here we go. Remove map. Controller type. We don't want that one. We want this one. Int controller ID. And these are strings, right? Right? Aren't they up here? Input category, input layout. So what's the problem here? Oh, we need this to be the, uh, uh, what is the, what is the type here? I guess it's a, uh, what is this going to be? Joystick map. That's probably what it was. That was a little bit of a IntelliSense guesswork, so we'll see if this actually did what we wanted. Okay, I'm gonna um oh that's interesting. Were we not saving that uh, map? Let's see. Okay. Ugh, this is a lot of stuff. All right, game settings. Okay, we have a DualShock. We have a rando thing. We have an X input gamepad. They're all showing up properly. And the X input gamepad, we're going to switch this to X. Okay, now we've saved something. Um, now let's let's close this. Let's go look at what we what we've done. <laughs> uh, here it is. Okay, and all it has, it has no keyboard mappings, but for game pads, it has an X input mapping, and here it is. Okay, so now let's run this. And if we go here to game settings, change control layout, okay, the dual shock still has a mapping. And if I go to the X input, we have, in fact, do we have the changes though? Couldn't this be a problem if you use third-party controllers that act as generic 360 controllers? Mm-hmm. Yes, that will be a problem, and that is a limitation of the X input, which we have to use because it's the only way to get the full um, use of the triggers. Um, and there are various other reasons why on Windows you're supposed to use X input, and it does come with that problem where... Um, uh, if you had two X input devices, an Xbox 360 controller and an Xbox One controller, and you wanted this game to have different mappings for those two, that's not possible. Um, this is interesting though, because I don't think it loaded. I don't think it loaded our mapping, right? Because this still says B. We set this to X, um, and then quit. Uh, I'm not sure where we would see that change, because this is kind of all just messy um, what we can do now is we can try to walk through the load the loading here and see what's what's happening um, it's possible that we are I've screwed up um, I screwed up one of these uh, steps in the deserialization so let's do this let's run this Oh, it is running. Okay, well, we have that going now, so let's hit play. Yeah, G Sprat, there's a whole bunch of annoying little edge cases with uh, X input versus other input types and stuff. It's annoying. Okay, so here we go. So we're trying to load the mapping. We found it. Did we get any keyboard data? 
Oh, we haven't gotten that far yet. We've we've just got the root data here. <laughs> Missing comments. Yeah. Okay, so keyboard data should be... Uh, why can't we, like, see the stuff? Why is it? It's a little annoying. Root data contains it. We got this thing called gamepad data. Um, so we go down into here. We don't have this. And we had no gamepad. The gamepad data uh, uh, was empty. Let's go look at our console. Null reference right here. So we were trying to look at gamepad data, but it came back as null from this. Uh, okay. So that's probably because I think this ha we have to call this actually just object and object. That's the when the JSON deserializer like creates this junk. That's the way it. Uh, um, that's the dictionary it will create, which means that right here, this has to be object. This has to be object, and then we can just be like we'll say string key equals kvp dot key as string and we'll say string value equals kvp dot value as string and then we should be able to say instead this is just key and this is just value okay now let's try again so that's good that's good problem was we're not loading our remapping data. Yeah, you know, Edgy Sprat, you get used to making solo projects and, uh, you know, you're your own code consumer, so. Although I do try to make the code pretty easy to understand just by looking at it. Um, although there was cases where I'm sure we could make the case that I'm not doing that as well as I could. Okay, so let's see if we can actually get into here now. So we load this. Is this a, is this a thing? Can't tell because... Oh, we can look over here. Looks like it's still null. Let's double check. Um, okay, so something's still funky. And we're still getting a null reference right here. Okay, so the problem might be... Let's go look at the file again. Oh, I think actually the, the dog needs to be let out. I'll be right back. So this looks like it's formatted okay. So what is the problem here? This is just a dictionary of string to string, so it's able to serialize it okay. And it we did get into here, so the key exists. <laughs> um okay now this is interesting so because we're getting a yeah we're getting null back oh that's right dictionaries are are guaranteed to be a string on the key type but object on the value type that's what the problem is going to be um, so we, we can actually just do this. 
And then we can just do this. I think that's the problem. So the main problem was this cast here is failing because it was not matching the type. Um, that is probably going to work now. So let's put a breakpoint back in. And I need to wrap up for the night as well because the dog is outside and probably going to the bathroom and I have to go take care of that. <laughs> let's just see if we can uh, get this to load. That would be a nice stopping point for the night. Okay. Okay, so we're going to run this. We're probably going to hit breakpoint. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, gamepad data is a real thing. It has a count of one now. So if I hit play now um and continue I'm gonna make it back into the game here and we go to and we go to game settings and we look at this we should now see that the hey look at that X input gamepad has been remapped to X sweet so let's do this real quick. We're going to test this by saying, and we're going to set reset to be square. And we'll say we're done there. We will close this. We will go look at this and see that control.map now has this. And where's the second one? Is it in here? Should we get a second one? Uh, what is it? Hmm. Maybe not. Doesn't look like we got a second one. Okay. So we got we got about halfway there. Um. All right. I'm gonna have to uh, wrap up for the night. Um. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. I will probably clean this up a little bit off stream and then move on to new tasks. Uh, from the next stream. So thanks for dropping by and have a good night.